Typically when it comes to my overall approach with making videos, I like to hit the ground running from the start. No intros to waste anyone's time and just get right to the point. But today's going to be a little different because as you guys know it's with the layout in my videos, it's usually me sitting in a chair, my record collection is behind me, the camera is in front of me, and I have at least one record off to the side just to give you guys a hint of what is in my vinyl collection. And as most of you guys probably are aware just from the very start of this video, it's uh, quite the gem as it's Morbid December Moon. This is an original 1994 copy, it's not a bootleg, and it's put out through Reaper Records right there in that corner. And how I was able to get this gem of a vinyl to add to my collection is it was all thanks to Ken's Death Metal Crypt. I know I said my thanks to him on Instagram, but I feel like I need to state it here as well because this is one hell of a way to show someone's uh, appreciation for just a shout out on YouTube. And he also gave it to me in the sense of congratulations over the fact that I'm getting married in Iceland in two weeks, which again, I'm, it's surreal that it's coming closer each and every day for me. But I just want to give a thanks once again to Ken's Death Metal Crypt for seriously giving me just as nerdy as this sounds, not just like a record, but like a piece of black metal history right here. So again, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. As I'm sure most of you guys are aware, metal has a very expansive category of subgenres. And when you get into the realms of extreme metal, it feels like it becomes a never-ending abyss of words clashing into each other to make up other new forms of subgenres. Yet one that's always perplexed me with interest, with its ultra-violent sound, that in a way fetishizes these grotesque images and ways of making music, would be gore grind. For those who are unaware, gore grind is a subgenre of extreme metal that blends styles of death metal and grindcore together. From that basic description, a lot of people would argue you know, that that is a form of death grind. Death metal, grindcore together, you call that death grind. But what separates gore grind apart from death grind is a few characteristics. One being aesthetically, as gore grind seems to favor more of the idea of this ultra violent and gory imagery that they use. But in terms of the overall sound, again, just a few characteristics that are different. One being the fact that in the guitars that are utilized in gore grind, there's a lot more groove to it on the way they utilize power chords. The overall production value tends to be a bit harsher and more raw sounding. And the real big key difference between the two is Gorgrind tends to uh, favor more of the idea of using pitch shifted vocals. As for the overall creation of Gorgrind, like any other style of music out there, there has to be this certain procedure that happens in a music scene for a new style of music to be created. Because I doubt at any point someone just randomly woke up and thought, hey, time to make Gorgrind music. And it falls back to what I believe that there's a certain procedure that happens. One being that there's a harbinger, then there's a prototype, and then finally you get the fully fleshed out piece of music that becomes its own thing. And in the timeline of gore grind, I feel like it follows that procedure. As for what I would consider to be the harbingers for gore grind, I would look at the first ever grindcore bands that were popping up in the mid to late 80s, such as early Napalm Death, Blood, Sore Throat, and Fear of God. And while obviously these are grindcore bands, I'm not debating that they're not, what they overall did and told the music scene during their time was, hey, you can make music, but it doesn't have to follow the rule book of what is deemed to be musical. Make it loud, make it abrasive, make it chaotic, just get your music out there. And that definitely left an impression on the underground extreme music scene during their time. The after effects of those bands would get the ball rolling for other forms of extreme music to continue. And this is where we get to the prototypes for Gore Grind. And obviously I'm going to be now talking about what is considered to be the first ever Gore Grind band and their huge pioneers for this style of music. That of course being Carcass with their debut full length album Reek of Putrefaction. This is an album that's often considered by many to be the most extreme album released in the 80s 
which I don't really feel like that's much of a hot take when you consider the fact that in 1988, this really changed the game for what extreme metal and music could provide to the listener with the pitch shifted vocals that made everything all the more deranged and inhumane sounding, the ballistic style of drumming that was utilized, and the guitar riffs that are just super dense and raw and would just bulldoze over everything you were hearing. This really made it seem as if the macabre and grotesque way of making music could sound monumental. What's also important to note with this album is the imagery and artwork you're seeing. Because as the story goes, the members of Carcass got a medical book and compiled all the images that they were seeing of all these rotted, dead bodies and put it onto the album artwork for Rika Putrefaction. And the overall reason for this is that they wanted to promote their pro-vegan views. And by showcasing all these dead, decomposed, rotted out corpses of uh, people, it would make meat become less consumable to the individual watching this. And while I can't say for certain there were any results of more people becoming vegan from the album artwork of Reacher Putrefaction, what did end up happening is it gave Gorgrind this identity now in terms of this aesthetic because as the years would roll on into the 90s and more Gorgrind bands were popping up you're noticing now that there's a lot more album artwork that has like this ultra-violent grotesque and gore-fueled album artwork front and center on the uh, albums that you're seeing that again this album not only musically but also aesthetically gave Gorgrind an identity. While Carcass will be praised to the moon and back for eternity for being the big pioneers for Gorgrind, I feel like another band that doesn't get the credit that they rightfully deserve for this particular time period of like proto Gorgrind is Impetigo with their debut full length album, Ultimo Mondo Cannibal. And while yes, Carcass did come first with Rika Putrefaction in 1988, and Impetigo's debut full length album came out in 1990. What's important to recognize here is again, Impetigo plays in that style of death grind and it kind of leans into the idea of gore grind. But in terms of execution, what separates them from Carcass is they always had more of like this brutal death metal approach. So think of something like Suffocation's Effigy of the Forgotten with their approach on vocals but kind of like mixed with the gritty nature of Carcass is what Impetigo at least sounds like to me. And while again, yes, we'll always give Carcass more amounts of attention, I feel like when it just comes to this particular time period and again, the prototype era for Gorgrind, Impetigo definitely deserves just as much of attention and respect as Carcass. At this point, you're noticing now that I'm calling it proto Gorgrind and not like fully fleshed out Gorgrind. And the reason for that being is when you take into account Carcass and Impetigo as well for this matter, see, they were leaning into the idea of gore grind. So when you hear their albums, yes, there's forms of it, but sometimes it deviates to just a death metal riff or a grindcore section or, you know, a mixture of both death metal and grindcore, you know, death grind. And again, it deviates away from gore grind every so often in the album, which is why people consider it not to be like fully fleshed out 100% gore grind and I feel like it goes into this argument too with like black metal what was the first black metal band Venom or Bathory where Venom was the prototype but Bathory was the first fully fleshed out black metal band like the first true black metal band and in the realms of gore grind yes we can still call Carcass the first gore grind band but when it comes to what was the first fully fleshed out true gore grind band that wouldn't come forth until the 90s because in this particular time period we were getting bands like regurgitate hemorrhage dead infection general surgery pathologist and arguably the most important of the bunch last days of humanity which went full force gore grind with no deviations all of which taking clear-cut inspiration from the early carcass albums but just making it all the more nasty and grotesque sounding as for the album artwork, it was just way more on the nose with what they were trying to present here. That it wasn't really so much of like this political message that you know Carcass tried doing with Rika Putrefaction, 
but more so of them just indulging in the idea of the ultra-violent and gore-fueled obsession as if it was kind of like this B-rated horror movie, but for people who wanted like the musical experience of that. Most people would think at this point, with this influx of gore grind bands popping forth, that it would kind of lose its appeal to its audience if it's always trying to do the exact same thing in terms of its musical approach and the overall presentation that it does with the album artwork. And I'm not trying to state this as an insult, but yes, Gorgrind isn't really known for experimenting or expanding its sound. And while yes, you could cherry pick a name here or there that is kind of like experimental Gorgrind out there, it's few and far between, and a massive majority of gore grind bands tend to sink their teeth into what made it its own thing from the beginning. So when it comes to, I guess, finding new appeal to its audience, what it really tends to do is not so much expand the overall sound, but try different ways to, I don't know, shock you, I guess? Because in the mid-90s, this is where gore grind bands were still doing the same exact approach musically, but in terms of its themes, it changed it from like blood, guts, and gore, and again indulging in like that ultra violence, and finding more of this like odd fascination with sexual perversions, BDSM, and a lot of like explicit sexual content, because this would be at the point now in the mid 90s where the birth of Porno grind comes forth. Musically, gore grind and porno grind are the same exact thing. The only differences that I notice is that gore grind tends to be a bit more abrasive, and porno grind has a little bit more of like this punk sound in terms of the drumming that they utilize. But again, I'm really splitting hairs to find the musical differences between the two. What is noticeable about them that's different is, as I stated, Gore grind's more to do with blood, guts, and gore and all that jazz, and porno grind is all about like sexual perversions. And if you want an idea of what porno grind is, then I would recommend bands like Gut and my personal favorite, Cock and Ball Torture, that um, they're fun to listen to, but please note that uh, it's very degenerate. But just like gore noise, which I'm about to talk about in a bit, it's that degenerosity that it presents to you that gives it its own charm. And yeah, it's entertaining because it's really not taking itself too seriously, but just really pushing, I guess, the boundaries of the extreme in terms of the themes you can have for musical content. Then there's gore noise, as I stated, which I've talked about a handful of times on my channel, and I will admit the time that I did an explaining video all about it, there is one particular uh, project I forgot to mention, I'll say it here, because again, in the mid-90s, Gore Grind was trying to expand in other ways of being extreme a little bit, even if it's in the slightest of ways. And Gore Noise is essentially Gore Grind, but really putting a lot more emphasis, obviously, on noise. And this is where you would get the project known as Anal Birth, which, mm, such a great name that uh, really lets you know what gore noise is all about and if you're trying to get into gore noise and understand the aesthetic mindset and I guess culture of this very niche subgenre, Anal Birth is technically considered to be the first gore noise project. But still, that leaves for a lot of people, what is the appeal with gore grind? If it already had its heyday, why even listen to it that's anything new when the best has already come forth and all the new bands are just doing this copy and paste type of you know album artwork with all of these collages of like decomposed bodies and guitar riffs that again just take such obvious influence from early Carcass albums. A lot of people think all gore grind sounds the same. And yes, I will admit that uh, there's a lot out there that really don't want to expand the sound anymore but I wouldn't state that it's like necessarily, you know, copy-paste over and over again for these years because there are some that still to this day I feel like kind of push the boundaries in some sense. Maybe not musically, but in terms of its overall vibe, there are some noticeable differences. 
One that comes to mind that I'm surprised no one talks about is catasexual urge motivation from Japan. And the big difference that I notice about this gore grind band from any other gore grind band is that they have just a, such a strong occult vibe to them. Where other gore grind bands have the vibe that it's like all in your face like all the time, Catasexual Urge Motivation gives you the sound of gore grind, but there's a lot more reverb to it. It almost sounds in a sense as weird as this is, a bit atmospheric, as if like there's this monster lurking out there, but you don't know where it is or what it exactly looks like, but you know it's going to get you at some point. That's the vibe of Catasexual Urge Motivation, again, of like this occultish take on gore grind that so many more people need to check out. Other gore grind bands that have their own distinct sounds that give them this standout feature in the scene would be Disgorge, the one from Mexico, that basically it's gore grind but just way more brutal death metal fueled. So think of the brutal death metal scene from New York in the early 90s mixed with the sound of Impetigo, but just ungodly more beefed up on every aspect. That if you're really looking for some of the most pulverizing and punishing brutal death gore grind, a mixture of the two side by side together, Disgorge is an absolute must listen. And if you want the next level from Disgorge, then I would recommend Viscera Infest which takes obvious influence from Disgorge, only somehow they're playing everything faster because the drummer that they have, I've seen video footage of what he does, it doesn't even look real. Like, it's hard for me to even process that the drums are being played by a human being because he's hitting at least, like, I think 360 BPM, if not more. It's really inhumane instrumentally that I know it's just all blast beats, but the fact that someone's playing that fast, it's something that you just have to hear or see to even believe. Now when it comes to more of the experimental gore grind bands, again, there's few and far between, but for some reason a handful that I've come across tends to be from the Czech Republic, so I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if it's by chance, coincidence, or they have something going. But a few that I've come across would be Amato Granuhu, which God, hopefully I said that somewhat correctly, that it feels like it's self-aware of just the ridiculous nature of gore grind and wants to capitalize on that because a lot of the releases that they do, it'll be gore grind, but there's a lot of influence to do with like electronic music that makes it a lot more experimental and showcases that there are people out there that want to be Again, ambitious in the sense to just see where Gore Grind can go. And if that interests you, another band worth checking out, which they have a pretty large discography, but the name is just foolish. Again, giving me the sense that, like they're self aware of how ridiculous Gore Grind is and just its overall value, is Porky Vagina, which is characterized as experimental Gore Grind. And you'll often get um, ideas and influences of like technical death metal, a lot of electronic music, and even to an extent like disco is kind of involved in a weird way. And again, it's very foolish, but it capitalizes on again that self aware nature of where people find Gore Grind to be ridiculous. They want to push the envelope on the absurdity on everything. But for the people who are looking for newer gore grind bands to carry out the sound for a modern day audience that has all of the characteristics that you're used to hearing in the style and having the album artwork be basically nightmare fuel for the YouTube algorithm, definitely check out bands like Lymphatic Phlegm, which I believe is from Brazil, that they've been a lot more active as of recently of again carrying the sounds of like early carcass worship for a modern day audience. Then there's Miasmatic Necrosis, which is a personal favorite of mine in terms of some of the newer names that have popped up. That they have like this bulldozing effect to their sound on how they write riffs and how they perform their vocals. That is just super animalistic and just loads of fun to listen to. And then I would also recommend Pharmacist, as I believe they're from Japan. And their first handful of releases, they go for that gore grind approach. I know with the latest album that they've done, there's more of like this death thrash, like they've really changed it up, but definitely check out their debut full length album as again, it's just really hard hitting, grotesque and crushing gore grind. Personally for me, I just view that gore grind is a very 
Ridiculous genre. There's a lot of absurdity to it. And I'd like to think that a majority, if not every single one of them, is self-aware of just how insane this sounds and looks to really anybody, whether you be a seasoned listener of extreme metal or this is your first time just being aware of what gore grind is, there's just a sense of like, I don't know, just foolishness. It's like, I don't know, I, I guess one way of looking at it is think of people who create B-rated horror movies or just into like shock value stuff. You want that, but now it's being presented to you in the musical sense. That's what gore grind is no matter what. And I feel like that's the big appeal to it. So again, it's very lowbrow in terms of how the presentation, the overall components, and the dynamics of it and musically and aesthetically, but that's what's giving it its identity and charm. So again, if you're just looking for caveman riffs, as they call it, and just very low IQ songwriting that's just meant for pure entertainment in the most grotesque and inhumane ways possible, then yeah, Gorgrind does have its charm. And that'll do it for this video, guys. Like always, links provided to everything I talked about will be in the description below. Really curious to know what you think of Gore Grind, and other than that, that'll do it. So like always, guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated, and have a great day.